Hello everybody, we are going live today with Michali, our regular Tuesday question from the forum that we actually discuss live and answer. We have a very good question today, so we're just waiting for some of you to show up, and of course for Michali. Michali, I see you. Let's see. Hi, Michal. Hi. How are you? I am great. How are you doing? All right. All right. Been, it feels like it's been a while. It's just been a week, but for some reason. It has just been a week. It's crazy. <laughs> I, can't, I know we keep saying it, but I don't know I if know. it's the weather or the season starting to change. I'm not sure. I'm not sure but, what it is, but yeah, extra sleep is yeah. they needed these days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So we have a really good question. I was like, it's a really good question. I don't know if I have a great answer, but it's a good one. So you're ready to. It's a good it? question. I am. All right. So it's a long question. It's by Clever Angel. Um, they say, hi. So I've been in therapy for the past six years at this point, and I've been healing slowly from various traumas and adverse childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Um, a large part of my journey has been about learning to shift my beliefs and reclaim parts of myself, etc. I Baruch Hashem, have good friends who have been supportive of me and who I've been supportive of in their journeys. I have one friend who has a very complicated family life and suffered tremendously with various traumas that she has disclosed to me. I've been supportive and strongly encouraged she seek therapy. On multiple occasions, she had tried seeking help, but at the end of the day, she never followed through. I feel frustrated every time she brings up her issues or when she gets depressed again, etc., because I feel like I kind of have to fall into the role of her therapist all over again. I've completely lost sight of what my role as a friend is versus my role as a makeshift therapist who pulls her out of her dark sides. I've recently realized that maybe enabling her to not actually get help, so I've distanced myself from her. I'm worried about hurting her, but I also can't take on that role anymore. I don't think I can be helpful to her when I'm secretly so annoyed at her for not seeing a therapist and almost forcing me to be hers, i.e. she calls me mid-panic attack, tells me deepest, darkest, etc., and expects me to just sit there and process things with her. Can anyone please help clarify my role here? Any advice? Thank you. Well, it's like loaded. <laughs> it's a very loaded question. Yeah. Um, I do you want to share your thoughts first, I'm, or should I'm I go? Happy <laughs> I'm happy to hear your thoughts. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Okay, maybe we'll piggyback off each other. You know. Exactly. Um. So, I mean, my first thought is, is that I think that what she's this person started to do in terms of creating boundaries and distance is the way to go. Um. I think that a lot of times, you know as friends we do fall into roles almost as like a pseudo therapist because like we're we're being told you know as this person the deepest darkest secrets and and um and sometimes friends are in a i know this is crazy stuff coming from a therapist but i really think that sometimes really good friends sometimes are almost more important than a mediocre therapist mm -hmm. you know um but i that's why we have to choose our friends so wisely because their advice can really help us and their advice can really hurt us um, but I think that um, when it comes to, you know, what this person is describing almost is like, you know, vicarious trauma, like sometimes as therapists, you know, we have to be careful that we don't um, suffer from trauma, from hearing our clients share their traumas. And we go to school to learn how to do that. We go to school, we get training, um, we have supervision. There's like all these checks and balances put in place so that we don't experience vicarious trauma. And if we do, then we have the tools to navigate it. Mm -hmm. Someone who hasn't gone through that training is not going to know how to deal with you know, the real vicarious trauma that comes when you empathize and care so much about people that you're you're talking with. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I find that oftentimes when people do experience vicarious trauma, it's because they are such caring, kind people. They just don't know how to create those boundaries. Um, and so I think with this person, it's so important to keep in mind that she's hurting herself in the process of being this person's friend, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that that's not a healthy relationship we should never be hurting ourselves for mm -hmm. any relationship whether it's a spouse a friend a child a parent um and i think that the best thing that she can do is to create boundaries now i don't know if she feels comfortable you know 
gently confronting this friend saying, look, you know, I love you. I care so much about you. I don't know what to do when you experience panic attacks. And I don't know what to do when you share with me this such incredibly painful information. And I want you to feel good because I love you and I care about you. Please go to therapy. Why aren't you going to therapy? Like, I just want you to feel good. And I don't have the tools or the training to help you feel good. You know, so I don't know if she feels comfortable having a conversation like that. But if the friend is not going to you know, take responsibility for her stuff, then she can't care more than the friend does about her life. Right. You know, that's one of the principles we're taught as therapists. It's like, you can't care more than the client, right? Right. Um, it sounds though like, I like like what you said. I think boundaries uh, are essential, but I like mm -hmm. in there that like, it would be helpful to confront the friend, gently confront the friend. I don't like, yeah. if you're a really good friend, I mean, this is just like my personal, this is not like a therapeutic perspective, but I just feel like, creating distance and creating boundaries without giving like forewarning or com a conversation or communicating is not, is not like my style. So like, I don't mm -hmm. recommend that. That being said, like that may be the only way to go about it because she's not, you're not able to speak to her. But I like that you said, like definitely gently confront her. Um, and the way of confronting her might not be possible the way you said it, because like, it sounds like this, this questioner has the skills to help, right? She's been in therapy, she's done the work. So, and she's been helping this friend all along potentially right so saying i don't have the skills is kind of like it's like maybe feeling dishonest or disingenuous or not true and therefore that might not be the best thing to say so even taking a more honest approach and saying like it's draining it's coming it's it's draining me i'm struggling more with my mental health as a result of trying to help you with your mental health and therefore i need to create distance and boundaries and I'm, you know, imploring you to get yourself the help so that we can continue to have a healthy relationship where we're each getting, you know, outside help and then we can be in a healthier. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, th I think that, you know, there's so many times where I'm sitting in a room with a client and they tell me, Holly, you don't understand what I've been through. And there are times where I actually have been through similar experiences and it would be inappropriate for me to self-disclose mm -hmm. because ultimately it wouldn't benefit the client. Um, but I think, I, I think that even if this person who's writing in has experienced trauma and has gone to therapy, I still don't necessarily believe that she has the tools to help this person because mm -hmm while they might have that shared background of childhood trauma, every single situation looks so different and she doesn't necessarily have the tools to help this friend while not getting hurt herself. Sure. And so right. I think, I think that like, you know, telling her, telling this friend, like, look, you know, I don't know how to help you. Right. And like the proof is kind of in the pudding, like this person's still struggling with panic attacks and, and, you know, kind of, um, imposing things on other people and not knowing how to kind of balance that in a healthy friendship, right? So I think I think that um, I, I agree. I think having a honest conversation, you know, sometimes we call them crucial conversations, um, you know, with this friend and saying, you know, not necessarily that she's like burning her out, but just that look, you know, I I made a decision for myself, like I made a pact for myself in terms of, you know making healthy choices and i really don't think that i'm the right person you know to call when you're having a panic att attack i really think the person to call is a therapist or your primary care doctor like you know or if you feel like you're in physical danger you know reach out to professionals i'm not a professional i'm a friend who loves you and it puts me in a really tough position when you call me because i don't know how to help you and then i don't necessarily have the tools to support myself as i'm supporting you mm -hmm. and you know I, I would love to hear, you know, and this is something that she can say as a friend, you know, like what what gives when it comes to not going to therapy? Is it that you haven't found the right shidduch when it comes to personality? Is it that it's too overwhelming? Is it hard to be vulnerable? Do you not know where to start? You know, I'd be happy to help you find competent therapists, mm -hmm. you know, but then that's it. And then at that point, you let go of the results, mm -hmm. you know, so you can totally. have a conversation, do your due diligence because you care. Yeah. And then that's where the boundaries come in. And you say, you know what, I I, like that's it, you know, and right. and when she calls, you can even make boundaries in your own mind. Like, you know, past nine o'clock of this friend calls, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. You know, ch generally people struggle more at night mm -hmm. um, when they're left with their own thoughts and it's darker outside, yeah. you know, so I think that if she, if she is kind of aware of this friend and how she rules and, you know, when, if there's any pattern of when she 
um, asks her for therapeutic help, then she can make boundaries around that. But after she communicated what she needs from her friend or what she doesn't need from her friend, then she's this person, clever angel, is in charge of enforcing the boundaries. So she, you know, she mentioned in her question, um, like it almost feels like she's being forced, mm -hmm. but really no one can force us to do anything unless God forbid there's a gun to our head. Right. <laughs> um, and, and there is no gun to her head. Right. And it feels like that, but there isn't. And so so the best, the, what's in her control is to create the boundary in the crucial conversation and to then enforce the boundary as painful as it is. And then of course to get her own support because this is really, really hard to do. Right. It's hard to watch people that we love and care about suffer. Mm -hmm. And you can do something, what we, you know, we call them like like let's say more 12-step philosophy detaching with love mm -hmm. you know you can you can say i'm so sorry i wish i could help you and i can't you know saying it with love and compassion as opposed to sorry you're driving me crazy or right. you're like, just still like cutting ties or and not communicating like there's, exactly. there's a whole spectrum so and there's a way to do it so like working with your therapist yeah. and you know taking some of these pieces of insight and trying to implement that i love that and also, like, yeah. I noticed in her post, there was a lot of, like, feelings. Like, I feel so bad. I feel so guilty. It's I, I don't know if those were the exact words she is, but that was the vibe I was getting. Yeah. And just to tell you that, like, it's normal to – and or, or I just I feel so burdened, you know, and, like, I and helpless. And I want yeah. to help and I can't help. And, you know, it's completely normal that you're having these feelings. It's completely normal that you're – you're not you're not cut out for this and you don't need to be cut out for this and that you have this anger and resentment and that it's it sounds like it's the anger and resentment that's stopping her from helping but that's that's a good thing because you know if not for the anger and resentment if you continue helping her like you she even mentioned in her post it's like she's enabling her in some way because as long as she has this friend yeah. as a crutch she's not forced to really maybe hit rock bottom and get the right help or feel like she has she needs the right help already for sure so for sure. The feelings and I love what you're yeah. saying, like, just to kind of generalize this to all of us, you know, I think that when we find ourselves in the stance between guilt and anger, mm -hmm. you know, feeling forced and like feeling like we care so much, but then feeling like trapped and then feeling resentful, mm -hmm. that's usually an indication that we're having, we're having a hard time maintaining our own boundaries, mm -hmm. that a boundary is being violated and chances are we're part of the problem because we're not maintaining our own boundaries. Correct. So whenever we that's find ourselves in that dance and like kind of cornered, then that's a great time to be like, oh, wait, which boundary am I not maintaining? Mm. And then to really, really honor that and to go ahead and enforce that boundary. I love that. And I love that we emphasize and you emphasized how boundaries are yours to, to make and yours to maintain. Like they're not hers. If she yeah. was able to respect the boundaries, you wouldn't need to make them in the first place. So don't expect it to be easy. Um, and I love that, like that guilt is a signal, like guilt is a very like comfortable feeling that we're used to having, but it's really not called for in this situation. It's really an avoidance of the anger an avoidance of the fact that some boundaries have been broken. You're um, deceiving yourself or losing yourself in this process. So I think exactly, exactly. And usually, I mean, like, you know, Hashem made guilt so that we know that we did something wrong, just like Hashem created pain so that we know there's something wrong in our bodies. Correct. So I think guilt in and of itself isn't isn't maladaptive, but it becomes maladaptive when we feel cornered and we're kind of toggling between guilt and anger, then that usually says, oh, there's something off here. Correct. We feel guilt, like though. we're I forced. Guilt, I think we, we overuse guilt. Like guilt is when you did something yeah. wrong. And yeah. You didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. It's like your go-to because it's like this uncomfortable feeling of like superimposed, uh, you know, expectations, but they're not really right or wrong. Um, right so exactly she didn't do anything wrong here correct. exactly correct. so yes, it's yes. an inappropriate use of guilt correct correct all righty i think we like really went into this beautifully totally so yes thank you thank you for the great question That's a great question yes clever. yeah thank oh. you clever angel um clever. and yes very clever it gives a lot to think about so thank you and good luck with your friend good luck um all right. thank you Faye. thank you Michali. thank you everyone for tuning in and thanks so much for making the time have a good one take care Bye. Bye-bye.